So I don't know if it's people being trolls or if it's sincere questions, but occasionally I get this question. Hey DT, do you do any real work on your Linux computers? Because all you ever do is configure Emacs and configure your window manager and play around in a terminal. Do you do any normal work stuff on your Linux computers? And yeah, obviously I'm a content creator, right? I make videos on YouTube and Odyssey. I do a lot of audio video content. It is uh, what I spend most of my time, especially on this workstation here at my office doing. Uh, one of the fantastic pieces of free and open source software that I love using is Caden Live. I edit all of my videos in Caden Live. Let's open up a recent project of mine inside Caden Live. Caden Live is fantastic. You know, I, I really have grown to love this program. You know, it's great as far as just basic video editing or more advanced stuff. It has some transitions, you know, some slide and fade effects and all of that. You know, of course, you can create uh, titles. Uh, you, you can do really cool stuff. Color grading. You can apply LUTs. You can zoom in and out of frames. You can do frame in frame. Like there, it can do some really advanced stuff, which is typically not what I'm doing on most of my videos, but occasionally you guys have seen some of the, the funny videos or the cinematic style videos I do on occasion where I will do some fancier effects inside Caden Live. But for the most part, my talking head videos, you know, they're pretty basic. But, you know, for what Caden Live is, if you've got some more advanced needs, Caden Live has a ton of compositions and effects that you can employ. In the last eight years or so, I have made probably more than 2,000 videos, and I've edited almost all of them in Caden Live. Another program that I use on a almost daily basis is GIMP, because other than obviously editing videos, I also need to create thumbnails, and a lot of times I will just take a screenshot of my desktop or of me or whatever it happens to be, and I'll create a thumbnail. Here's a recent one I did for the DT Options channel. But typically, I will take an image. Let's take a screenshot. For example, I've already got a folder full of screenshots. I'll just take an old screenshot of myself, maybe this picture right here. So this was from a few months back. Uh, it was a, a video I was doing. I don't know what the video was, but let's make a, an example thumbnail here. One thing, you know, this is taken from my camera here that I'm recording on, but one thing I could do, let's actually add a little contrast to really make me stand out in this image if I wanted to. I could also fool around a little bit with the saturation, maybe add a little extra saturation. Typically, I make my thumbnails 1280 by 720, and by default, this image is 1920 by 1080, so let me change it to 1280 by 720. And then let me do something like select the whole thing. Let me add a border. I can go to stroke selection here. The border will make it 20 pixels wide. I could go into the text tool. I could add some text like this is a test, right? And I could change the font to whatever. I typically use impact for my thumbnails, right? This is the font style I typically do, and I typically do it all caps, just for even more impact, if you will. So this is a test, exclamation point. Maybe I'll do some things with some colors. So let's actually take this line. We'll do it the opposite color. So I was doing white, then purple, then white again. And then what I could do is let's go create a new layer. So let me get into the menu, new layer here. And then now I've got the new layer sitting above the text. Let me draw some boxes on top of the text. So in this case, let's make that white. Actually, I want to make that black. So let's invert the color. And then let me do the same thing here. Draw a box. And this one will be white. And then let me go ahead and get a key binding here to reverse the color. So this one will be purple. Let me draw the rectangle tool here. You know, this is just a very quick example of something I will do. Let me drag the text layer on top of the box layer. Let me merge those two layers down to where they're one layer. Let me hit the move tool to move the text out to the side. You know, I, I make thumbnails on a constant basis, obviously, in GIMP, and over the years, I've gotten pretty good at manipulating GIMP here. Let's go ahead and discard this example thumbnail. Another program I use on a somewhat regular basis is Audacity, which is an audio editor. Now, most of the time with my videos, if the audio settings on my audio server rack back there on all this equipment is good, you know, I, I shouldn't have to do any cleanup of my audio, but occasionally I will have to go and clean up some audio, so I'll drag my 
a video file that includes the audio track into Audacity. And I will, for example, I could add an effect. Maybe the sound is too low. So I will go into volume and compression and go into amplify. And I can raise it, whatever it needs to raise, right? If I think it needs three decibels, four decibels, whatever, you know, hit apply and it'll make that change for me. If you've got some weird noise, that's being picked up on your microphone when you're not speaking you can actually get rid of that stuff you can select a portion of the track where you're not speaking and then go into effect and go into noise removal go into noise reduction and then click this button get noise profile and now the noise effect knows that this kind of noise here is this noise and tell it to get rid of all of that noise so go into noise reduction again and then tell it to get rid of all that noise and pretty much everywhere where you're not speaking, especially, you know, it has that sample of that background noise, whatever it is, a fan blowing or rain falling, whatever it happens to be, whatever the crud is you need to get rid of. It just got rid of that out of your sound file. So Audacity is fantastic. You can add reverb. You can change the pitch. You guys have seen my horror movie trailers that I do uh, every Halloween with the spooky voice. I do all of that by... Uh, basically, I alter my voice using Audacity. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Another really professional uh, multimedia piece of software that I should mention is Blender, which I don't currently have on this machine. I've made videos about Blender in the past. It's for like 3D animation. I'm not a Blender person. I mention it because I have made videos about Blender as a video editor in the past, and I've actually edited a few of my videos in the past in Blender. If I've ever in a situation where maybe Caden Live just updated and the update breaks for some reason. <laughs> I need to use a different video editor. Typically my alternate is Blender. But other than audio video content creation, I also use my Linux computer for real work as far as writing. Uh, you know, obviously I use Emacs as my text editor most of the time. So I do a lot of things with Emacs org mode. Uh, some things I do is, for example, I do, well, you know, I make notes using org mode. This is the video man page series, uh, basically, where I have a list of various documents for this. For example, I made a video about the said command. You know, here are the notes from that video, right? And this is basically everything I went over in that video. And I got a lot of things that are show notes that I've written down as org documents in Emacs. I wrote a book. For the most part, in Emacs, I've got a book called uh, The Super Wheel Option Strategy. It's about a trading strategy for the DT Options channel. But I wrote that book, published it on Amazon uh, nearly two years ago. And I wrote most of it in Emacs. But then, of course, I needed a, a word processor to format it properly. And I did all of that in LibreOffice. Let's go into LibreOffice Writer. So this is the book in LibreOffice. I'm using a dark mode here in LibreOffice. Uh, now, naturally, when it's printed out, obviously, it's black text on white paper. But you can see, you know, I've done all of this, created the table of contents, formatted everything in LibreOffice. So I wrote it all, obviously, using evil mode in Emacs. And then I, you know, imported it all into LibreOffice and then did everything I needed to do. Uh, and, of course, a lot of it, I should also mention there's a lot of tables and artwork, a lot of illustrations that was all done in GIMP. So uh, getting back to GIMP, GIMP is a fantastic piece of software. For those of you that are traders or investors and worried about being able to trade, day trade or swing trade, whatever it happens to be, chances are that you've got trading platforms that you can use on Linux. For me, I use Tasty Trade as my broker. Works fantastically here on Linux. So there's Linux, native Linux packages. So it's cross-platform Windows, Mac, and Linux. Great uh, as far as a broker and a trading platform, especially if you trade options. For those needing charting, uh, software trading view is kind of the de facto standard that most people use trading view also as native linux packages now for those of you that love productivity kind of software if you're one of those people that consider you know I, i've got to do all this real work and i need all this productivity kind of stuff you know note taking stuff and uh, um, uh, work management kind of tools you know because i need to 
to be hyper focused on my work. Well, there's plenty of that stuff on Linux, right? When it comes to productivity tools, we've got a million things for me being an Emacs user. All of my productivity tools are in Emacs. I've got org mode. I've got org agenda as far as my a weekly schedule on my calendar for those that don't want to get into the rabbit hole of Emacs though I mean you've got cool things like Joplin for those that want a cool note-taking application you know Joplin you write everything in markdown you write in markdown and it displays it as rendered markdown <laughs> like Joplin is fantastic I did a video about Joplin oh it's probably been five, six, maybe seven years ago, I did a video about Joplin, fantastic program. For those of you that want proprietary solutions, some of the more popular proprietary note-taking kind of stuff are things like Todoist and uh, Obsidian. Uh, I believe all of that stuff also works on Linux. I've never tried either one of those programs though. One of the things I do have on Linux though is I have a Nextcloud server. So I've got a Linux server, a web server, running Ubuntu LTS server that I've installed Nextcloud to, where now I can have the Nextcloud desktop client on all of my Linux machines, and I use it for a file sync. So I'm not going to log into my Nextcloud account because you guys don't need to see any of that information. But, you know, taking a look at the Nextcloud website, you can see you've got a lot of cool stuff. It has built in like office suites and you've got built in a uh, file manager, basically, where you can sync files between multiple computers. You've got an email client built into Nextcloud should you want to use Nextcloud as your email client. And then, you know, you get cool little dashboards where you get uh, social media updates and email updates and things like that. You can kind of use this as your start screen where Nextcloud tells you everything that's going on. You even got collaborative uh, things you can do inside Nextcloud if you're using it for collaborative uh, work like uh, editing documents and things like that. Nextcloud is a fantastic piece of free and open source software. So to all the people that are leaving that snarky little comment, hey DT, do you ever do any real work on your computer? Yes. And the answer is obviously yes. You guys just saw a little bit of what I do. I do more work on my computer in one day than most of these trolls do in an entire week. Anyway, peace guys.